But that's fine because we have from Iowa Smokey D's, Darren Worth. Darren, apologize for the technical difficulties. How are you tonight? Not a problem, Greg, at all. Yeah, I kept getting a busy signal. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we had some issues with uh, online, offline. The the uh, beauty of internet radio is that once uh, once you lose a connection, everything goes right down the crapper. So uh, apologize for that, and uh, let's go ahead and, and get into the, the the meat of the conversation. I was hoping to get Steve, too, from I Smell Smoke. Uh, Darren, of course, is from Iowa Smokey D's. He's the pit master there, currently ranked number two in the KCBS for Team of the Year points race, and he is headed down to the Tempe Q and Brew Festival December 4th, uh, put on by uh, AZ Barbecue and then the folks down there at azbarbecue.com. So, uh, Darren, first of all, for the teams, or, or not for the teams, but for the people that might not be familiar with you guys and Iowa Smoky D's, can you give us a little brief background about you and how you got into competition barbecue? Well, our competition barbecue career started out with really deer sausage, um, we were looking out. I went to. We were big deer hunters here in Iowa, and and one year back in 2002, I decided. Uh, you know, I sent my deer into the locker to be processed in a $1,200 bill, and I said I ought to be able to do that myself. So I started. I'm going to buy a smoker, and I'm going to get into smoking deer sausage and and cut that bill down. Well, that led me into competition barbecue, um, which led us to uh, in 2002 uh, a visit to the American Royal and instant addiction. Did you do very well so, at that uh, competition? What, what's that? Did you do very well at that competition? Um, we actually hadn't even started competing. We just went and hung out um, and just met different people around there. Went home, said, this is something we got to do. Got on the phone, ordered a, a pit out of Houston, Texas. Um, we really didn't start competing until um, about May of 2003. Went to our first competition uh, in Sedalia, Missouri. Ended up having uh, four inches of rain overnight, hail, and an 85-mile-an-hour downburst um, that took our brand-new Easy Ups and melted them to our new pit <laughs> at 6 o'clock in the morning. Needless to say, we turned in our stuff. Uh, we got two ribbons, and I always say, all it takes is a ribbon, and $100,000 later, you're in the business. <laughs> yeah, it seems like uh, for the people that get in there, if they do very well right off the top, that really seems to have the bug that's bit them, and, and bang, they're right in competition barbecue. Now, focusing more, I guess, on, on this year, well, first of all, what uh, what are you cooking on right now? Uh, right now, I cook on a combination. I've been cooking on some uh, 22-inch Weber Smoky Mountains along with uh, uh, an FEC 100 I got in the trailer, too. All right. And how many competitions have you cooked this year in 2009? Um, this year, I think we were up to 23 competitions, which is about normal for us. So prior to this year, I mean, you're currently ranked number two, obviously. Well, we'll see how everything unfolds here over the course of the weekend. Uh, but prior to this year, what was your best team of the year finish? Um, our best team of the year finish, uh, the best we've ever done in 2004 and 2006, we finished six in the KCBS. In 2005, we hit seventh. Uh, 2007, we had kind of an off year and hit 13th. In 2008, uh, we hit ninth. So we've always been there in the top 10, uh, just never been up this high. So did you anticipate such a, well, I guess what, what ends up being such a close race here in 2009? You know, I didn't. Rod Gray from Pellet Envy back in July um, started telling me, you know, you're in the best position to win Team of the Year. And I said, what are you What are you crazy? I'm not even looking at Team of the Year. <laughs> and he was giving me all kinds of crap, saying, oh, you've got a spreadsheet just like I do. And I'm going, I... I <gasps> but evidently... Hey, Greg. Oh, hey, there's Steve. All right, so now we have uh, Steve Farron <laughs> from I Smell Smoke. Sorry about the, uh, sorry about the complications there, Steve. Uh, we have uh, Darren uh, no Darren Wharf from Iowa Smoky D's on as well, and uh, Darren was just uh, kind of going over. I was asking him if he anticipated such a close race here in 2009. So, Darren, why don't you go ahead and uh, finish up that thought? I apologize. Well, yeah, no, we we were talking like I said. Rod Gray had said that we were in the best position back in July to win Team of the Year, and I, I just kind of told him it was crazy and blew it off. Um, you know, and as the Team of the Year progressed, we moved up in the rankings. Uh, but then I was pretty much done with the season. We got to the to the Royal and the Jack, and I was I was pretty much done. And and uh, my wife was like, "Well, oh, you need to push on." I said, "Well, let's just see what these guys do in Talladega, and let's see what happens." You know, and I kept kind of putting it off, just thinking that maybe one of these guys was going to rise to the top, and I could just have the rest of the year off. And we were in the middle of opening a new barbecue restaurant, so the timing really wasn't any good anyway. Um, but then, you know, when they, you know, Steve went up and and actually moved up in the rankings. 
um, there was just a lot of coercion from my wife saying, you need to get back in this race. So we got back in the race, and, and here we are. Talking with Darren Worth from Milo Smoky D's, currently ranked number two, team of the year, KCBS, and uh, Steve Farron joins us from I Smell Smoke. Uh, Steve, let me back up for a second and just get a little brief background on you, how you got into competition barbecue, what you're cooking on, and then maybe what your best uh, team of the year finishes were prior to this year. Uh, about 14 years ago, some friends of mine were competing. Uh, they sucked me into it, and I got in pretty deep. Uh, now I own a pretty nice trailer a backwood smoker, and an FE100. Um, my best placing in the KCBS overall, I'm not sure. Uh, we've been ninth in pork in the past. Uh, this is this year we've cooked a lot more contests. How many have you cooked? Do you, do you have an idea? About 25 this year. All right, so you and Darren seem to be uh, right around the, the same even amount. Darren, probably around 23, around 25. Uh, did you anticipate, Steve, such a such a close you know, coming right down to the last minute type deal for uh, for this competition season when it started? Uh, not at all. And, and, you know, we didn't expect to be in it. Um, as the year went along, it looked like maybe we'd be top 10, then it was top 5, and then Talladega hit, and it's like, wow, we have a chance at this thing. And that was, for the people that don't know about Talladega, I mean, that was a huge competition, and you really stepped up big and took grand champion – was it at that point where you knew that it was probably going to be a push from uh, from there to the rest of the to the rest of the competition year to see who would be team of the year? Uh, no question. I mean, if you have a shot at it, you got to go for it because you know you don't know when the chance is going to come again. We're talking with Darren Worth from Iowa Smoky D's and Steve Farron from I Smell Smoke. Uh, this is the Barbecue Central Show. Uh, now, I guess. Looking at it from, you know, you guys are obviously competitors here, and I had had Rod Gray on from Pellet Envy last week uh, talking about it, and then kind of through uh, some some quick being able to put some stuff together, uh, able to host you guys here on the show and, and get your opinion. Uh, we all know that Rod could finish last and still win Team of the Year as long as neither of you guys take Grand Champion. So in terms of pressure, certainly there's a lot of pressure at every competition that you cook, especially some of the bigger named ones like the Jack or uh, the American Royal. But is there even more pressure or perhaps is there is there not pressure for this coming down right to the last competition for the year? And we'll start with Darren. Um, really, I don't think there's really no pressure for me, um, me and my wife cooking under Iowa Smoky D's. I mean, there's just, you know, Rod's got the target on his back. You know, when we went in, out to Arizona the first time, borrowed a couple cookers, ran out around to Sam's Club, got a bunch of meat. These guys are, you know, driving in all this time and, you know, bringing in aged briskets and all this stuff, and I'm just scrapping around town in Phoenix trying to find stuff. When we come out with a victory, move us to the top of the top of the leaderboard, that's when the pressure was on us. Then we went to Florida the next week. Rod wins, puts him back up. Bullets really on his back you know the target's really on his his back to us we we really have nothing to lose you know we weren't really in this season to become team of the year you know at this point if it happens it happens if not and rod wins we'll be the first first in line to congratulate him and if steve pulls off something we'll be right over the there with him too what do you think steve are you under a new amount of pressure or are you just treating this like any other competition i agree with darren the pressure is not on us um we're just going in there with a the hope of, you know, maybe getting lucky and uh, winning this thing. Rod's got all the pressure. Um, and I don't know, we're just going to have fun like we do at every contest. If we don't have fun, there's no point. So so is that it? Is it not correct where if, if neither of you guys win, then, then Rod does win or he does retain uh, is, grand championship status? That is correct. All right, so uh, certainly... I guess to me, uh, hearing from a, it would seem from an outsider looking in that there would be a certain amount of pressure on either one of you uh, in order to, to to overtake him and win uh, win the competition. But uh, certainly, you guys are the ones that are out there doing it uh, weekend in and weekend out. Uh, have either of you had any issues with any particular category this year? And if so, will you do anything differently this weekend uh, in in preparation? And we can start there with Steve. Chicken is our worst category, uh, always has been. I think it always will be. Uh, the only good thing is that the last contest in Arizona, we placed fifth in chicken. So if we can bring our brisket back up where it normally is, I think we stand a pretty good shot. How about you, Darren? Um, you know, chicken and rib, I mean, pork and brisket have been there all year for us. 
um, chicken and ribs have been up and down. Chicken was, uh, you know, I thought I'd forgot totally how to cook chicken, and then we go to the American Royal Open and win first in chicken. You know, and how do you explain that? Well, you explain it's the Royal Open. So, But it's been chicken. We've been hitting in chicken and ribs now. Um, you know, last week or two weeks ago when we were down in Florida, pork, which has been our greatest category all year long, uh, you know, we're scoring in the 160s and 170s in pork. You know, we pull out a 148 in pork. We thought it was the best pork we had cooked all year. We pulled a 148. All we needed was five points. We probably wouldn't be having this conversation. Don't you keep up with those 148s. <laughs> there ain't no such thing as a 148. Right, we're talking with uh, Steve Farron from I Smell Smoke, currently ranked number three. Team of the Year KCBS and Darren Worth from Iowa Smoky D's, currently ranked number two. What would it mean to uh, to you guys if you actually end up, I guess, in in your estimation from what you said, pulling uh, pulling an upset winning uh, team of the year overall here for 2009 the KCBS? Would it be extra special to win it in such dramatic fashion because it is coming down to this last contest? Uh, what do you think about that, Darren? Oh, oh, it definitely would be. I, I was just talking to the president of KCBS uh, today. He was actually passing through on the way through town. And I told him how, you know, KCBS – you know, gets a lot of black eyes for a lot of things they do. But this team of the year race has really brought in, you know, a lot of exposure, a lot of positive exposure to KCBS, uh, you know, and, and it's really good. Now, from us, winning the team of the year, um, you know, we've got three restaurants now. We're going to promote the crap out of that. But like I told Mike Lake today, you know, I can promote I got number two and number three in the country and promote it just as well. You know, so we're, we're in it for the restaurants. Other than that, personally, we've had a great year. What do you think about that, Steve? Uh, I think it, it would be huge to win it in such a close race. I mean, it would be huge anyway, but, I mean, this is a lot of fun. There's a lot of people on the sidelines following this thing, and, you know, you get emails from them uh, rooting you on, and it, it just makes it exciting, not just for us, but I think for all the KCBS. So if you were given your druthers... Would you, uh, either of you, rather be 7,000 points in the lead and be able to run away and hide with this thing, uh, having it all wrapped up uh, for either one of you, respectively? Uh, or would, is the competitor kind of coming out in you, and would you really like to have it coming down to the last competition as it is here, uh, which will be taking place December 4th, Tempe at the Q and Brew Festival? Would you rather have it come right down to the last competition between you and a handful of other guys to decide who's going to be the ultimate winner? And uh, we'll start with Steve there. Uh, honestly, I'd like the whole Jimmy Johnson move, get it over with, and win it six weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, I'm driving 40 hours to go to this contest, and, you know, we hit snow, we hit rain, and who knows what we'll hit on the way home. But, you know, uh, having your friends in it is a big plus. I mean, Darren, I consider a friend, and Rod's a good friend. So, you know, I, I think it's pretty fun this way. Darren, what do you think? Oh, I, I just love coming down the last. That's a competitive spirit. Um, this is amongst us. I wouldn't want to be out in front by 2,000 points. There's, you know, or 6,000 points. No way. You know, this is this is about the chase. This isn't about the team of the year, and that's what I've been telling everybody along the way. This is about the chase, and to me, it's even more of the the challenge. These guys are driving all over the country, um, you know, and here I am flying in, borrowing cookers, grabbing meat from wherever <laughs> I can. That's part of my glory. And part of the chase for me that makes it exciting. It's the old uh, fast Eddie way of doing competition barbecue. Travel with your own briskets and fly in on jet planes, beg, borrow, and steal cookers, and and coming out with wins. That's uh, very commendable, Darren. And I'm sure not a lot of people could pull that off. And again, we're talking with Darren Worth and Steve Farron, I Smell Smoke and Iowa Smoky D's, respectively. By the way, uh, Rod Gray, obviously listening in, uh, leaving a message for you guys. Darren and Steve are full of it. The pressure is on them to win. So, number one seems to think that the pressure is on you guys. <laughs> well, uh, what does he know? Yeah, well, exactly. What does he know? Yeah. yeah I'm, he's just nervous. He's got 22 hours to drive. Um, evidently, Rod has quickly forgotten who won in Arizona three weeks ago. <laughs> now, Will, so from what I can ascertain after uh, talking to you guys for a little bit here, I, I'm assuming that as it all plays out here over the course of the weekend, if neither of you guys end up winning, uh, it's not going to be a, a huge disappointment for you guys. Is that safe to say, Darren? Yeah, no no huge disappointment. It's been a great year. Um, whoever wins this thing, um, you know, we're going to congratulate them and, and mean it. I mean, it's, it's really been fun. The chase has been great. We've been 
following on Facebook and Twitter and out on the barbecue forums and, and everything, and everybody wants to know what's going on. I really hope this thing comes down to the very last category and the very last call. I hope we're all three in this thing and we come to that brisket call. And the only reason I hope we're coming to that brisket call is because I've won brisket the last two weeks. <laughs> Steve, not, not disappointed if you don't win in the end? No, no, not really. Um, this is a big deal for us just placing in the top three. I mean, uh, we're from New England. We usually cook eight contests a year. Uh, we never thought we'd be in this position. So we're just happy where we are, but we're going to give it our all to push it through. We're talking with Darren uh, Worth from Iowa Smoky D's and Steve Farron from I Smell Smoke. Uh, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up here, guys. And, again, I apologize for the technical difficulties there up front. Uh, Darren, anything you want to say to uh, Steve or Rod or any other teams that are going to be there, uh, run run your smack now or forever hold your peace? Well, you know, Steve, if you're out in Phoenix, could you pick me up a couple briskets? <laughs> and, and to Rod Gray out there, you know, the last time we went to Arizona, I, I kind of forgot my wood. You know, I had my uh, famous Iowa cherry wood that I always cook with, I forgot. So I went over to Rod, and Rod owned me a little bit of pecan wood I'd never cooked with it before and and beat it. So I wonder if I could get a little pecan wood from Rod. And if Steve's in Phoenix already, could he look around and find me a couple of briskets? All right, Steve, uh, any any smack back to Darren or Rod or any other team that you're going to be seeing down there this weekend? Well, I just want to say, Darren, I have your brisket right here. <laughs> Oh, my. Uh, all right. Shameless self-promotion. Uh, Darren, website where people can keep up with you and find out more about uh, Iowa Smoky D's. Yeah, we're out, uh, you know, at www.smokeydsbbq.com. And if you're in Des Moines, Iowa, we've got uh, award-winning barbecue at three different locations. Steve, website for you? I smell smoke.com by Wicked Good Charcoal, Slabs Rubs. Uh, who else are we sponsored by? Barbecue is the light pellets, all good stuff. All right, there they are. Uh, currently ranked number two and number three, all roads heading to Tempe, Arizona for the Tempe Q and Brew Festival. That, of course, December 4th. And this was Darren Worth, Iowa Smoky D's, and Steve Farron, I Smell Smoke. Guys, appreciate you taking time out here. I know it's a busy week. Getting ready for the last competition of the year. Good luck to each and every one of you, and thanks for doing it tonight. Okay, thanks, Greg. All right, guys, take care. Thank you. Steve and Darren. And by the way, a hellacious amount of technical difficulty up front. Apologize for that. That pretty much ruined the interview uh, for the first uh, 10 minutes. So that's on me. But uh, luckily, Darren and Steve came in, showed up huge, and picked me up. Uh, So we'll step away quickly. And when we come back, I will have a conversation with John Marcus, executive producer of the upcoming show, which will be debuting Thursday on TLC, BBQ or Barbecue Pitmasters. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And this is the Barbecue Central Show. It's Rempy News. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy knockdown smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the trunk of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at the BarbecueGuru.com. That's www.the bbqguru.com or call 1-800-288-GURU Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at Fred's Music and Barbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. 
And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Get in the smoke. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. We are back. It's the Barbecue Central Show. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Thanks for joining me. BBQ Central Radio at gmail.com is the email address. This portion of the show brought to you by D Dog's Barbecue Rub. You know you love D Dog's Barbecue Rubs and Sauces, but would you like to buy them locally? Of course you would. Who wants to pay the shipping? Not me. If you do, then D Dog's needs your help. Send him the name and address and phone number of your local barbecue store, farmer's market, or grocery store, and D Dog's will do the rest, but you got to do Darren that solid. D A R I N at D D O G S B B Q.com. Darren at D Dogs B B Q.com. Hit him up with that information. You will be buying D Dogs barbecue rubs and sauces locally. Forget the shipping. Or you can visit their website, D Dogs B B Q.com. If you're not afraid of shipping, either way, Darren is happy to help out. It's a good folks, D Dogs barbecue rub. All right, as promised, joining me now to talk about a hotly anticipated TV show that will be making its debut here on Thursday, December the 3rd, is Emmy Award winner and Peabody Award winner, uh, I might add. So probably when we go back through the annals of the show, one of the most highly decorated guests I have ever had on the show, it's executive producer of Barbecue Pitmasters, John Marcus. John, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Great to be here, Greg. Certainly appreciate you making time out to do this, John. Before it actually airs this coming Thursday, I mean, what's the what's been the buzz here, either on the internet or just on the street that you've been getting? You know, the barbecue community is keenly interested in how its sport is represented on television, and I really like that. People are very engaged. Mostly, I think people think finally someone might be getting it right, and I'm talking about the whole team involved in the show in that this is what the first really in-depth look at what the world of competition barbecue is like. We are sparing no details, including process and the travails of the road and all those things. And I think it's important to point out because you're not just a guy who's an executive at a TV company looking to make some greenbacks off of the sport that is competition barbecue. And you're actually a member of Central Pork West. You're a competitive barbecuer yourself. I am. I compete mostly in New England, where there's some very, very intense competition heating up these days. I like cooking in Windsor, Vermont at the Harpoon Contest. I like the uh, Hudson Valley Rib Fest. I, I want to do New Holland in Pennsylvania. And I've been competing for about seven or eight years. My very first experiences in barbecue were cooking with Paul Kirk on his team out in Kansas. Uh, my first contest was Lenexa, and Paul is, I consider, one of the founding fathers of the movement. I uh, contacted him over the phone because I was researching barbecue. I got his daughter on the phone. I got his home number somewhere over the internet. And his daughter was in a bad mood because she'd had to spend all day in the house making his sauce. (laughs) And I uh, said, I want to learn how to barbecue from your dad. And she couldn't find any classes he was going to teach near me. This is about nine years ago. And she said, but I'll, t- I'll give you a tip. If you write him a check, he might let you cook on his team. I'll give you a hint, John. If you write me a check, I'll teach you how to barbecue, too. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. Let me see. My checkbook's almost empty at this point <laughs> yeah, <I bet. laughs> when it comes to barbecue. But I, uh, I did just that, and I flew out to Kansas, joined Paul uh, at his cook site. It was just me and Paul Kirk. Imagine, you know, the opportunity there. And I have on my Emmy hanging there a fourth-place ribbon in chicken that's one of my most prized prize awards we're talking with john marcus he's the executive producer of a show that will be airing here this thursday on tlc barbecue pitmasters 
John, why don't you take us back through the genesis? Obviously, we've kind of found out through your history how you got into barbecue and the competition world. And and there seems to have been some success to a certain degree on some of the other, I call them higher number cable channels. There were some uh, barbecue shootouts and barbecue cook-offs uh, that had aired here a couple of years ago. But this really seems to step it up a bit, A, because it's TLC, so that's a little bit more mainstream. I mean, it doesn't get more mainstream than John and Kate plus eight equals divorce. But this this is really going to be ushering in barbecue to a whole new audience, as I said, more mainstream. How does this all kind of come about? Well, it's more than a hobby for me. It's a passion, and it's a whole culture I love to be part of. That once those other shows ended, the dream of doing a show that gave the most genuine, authentic look at competition barbecue, that never left me. And I had spent some time with some people in marketing from uh, my agency, UTA, out in Los Angeles, trying to find giant sponsors for some new version of the show. And it's just when the economy tanked, so it was very difficult. But I have to give a tremendous amount of credit to TLC because they were, at the same time I was coming to the end of trying to sell the show, they wanted to get into food as part of their programming. But the idea of how to do it was something they weren't certain about. And it was just one of those situations where the planets lined up. And a gentleman named Jay Peterson, who is a partner in Original Media, they have 14 reality shows in production, had remembered meeting me along my journey. And the whole thing just really came together uh, at the right time. And within a matter of two or three days, TLC had ordered Barbecue Pitmasters. So you pitch it, they take it. And for those that aren't familiar with what the show setup is going to be like, what's the concept of the show? How is it going to play out here uh, during the first season? The element that makes Barbecue Pitmasters true to the genre and authentic is the fact that we're at real contests. We shot eight episodes, and they're one-hour episodes, so we had the time to tell stories. Our cast members, as I call them, are cooking alongside people that are also cooking at a contest. It really shows what the obstacles are to people who take on this really challenging pursuit. And I think it's going to set it apart because it is going to appeal to the people who know the world and are looking for something that represents the world well. But I believe we're going to bring in a whole new generation, and that's our goal of people who might have an interest in it and are going to look at what happens and and go, you know what, I think I might want to join the fun here. It's really hard, but, man, I'd like to get in there and and mix it up with those people. He's a Peabody Award winner. He's an Emmy Award-winning writer as well, John Marcus, joining us here on the Barbecue Central Show talking about Barbecue Pitmasters. It will air this coming Thursday on TLC. Before we take a break here, John, why don't you tell us who exactly is on the show for those that don't know? Absolutely. Tuffy Stone of Cool Smoke. And Myron Mixon of Jack's Old South, Leanne Whippen of Woodchick's Barbecue, Harry Sue of Slap Yo Daddy, Jamie Gear, the very famous pit builder from Burleson, Texas, is on the show. And also Paul Peterson, who is a very well-regarded steak burner, we call him, from McKinney, Texas. I'm sorry, Greg, but what? I also left out, how could I, the godfather, we call him, Johnny Trigg of Smoking Triggers. Let's never forget Johnny Trigg, that's for sure. No, and Johnny is going to let me know I did. <laughs> I'm glad you are you and I am me in that <laughs> regard. So I guess one of the one of the questions that people wanted me to ask for sure was, I mean, Tuffy Stone, uh, former Team of the Year winner at KCBS, uh, Myron Mixon certainly needs no qualification to be on the show. Leanne Whippen, uh, while certainly being a pretty face, has won a number of great competitions. She's a very successful restaurateur and caterer. Uh, Harry Sue and his team of Slap Yo Daddy had uh, quite a record-breaking year this year, actually, in competition. Jamie Gear, one of the best KCBS cooks to ever actually get on the circuit before he kind of got out of that and got into pit making full-time. How was the, the selection process in the current KCBS? You have a, a Rod Gray, you have a Darren Worth, you have a Steve Farron, who are guys that really have a good shot at winning KCBS this year for Team of the Year. Was there consideration given to a team that might actually win that kind of a title while you were looking to cast the show? Absolutely. The qualifications for people who appear on the show is they have to be really accomplished in this field. They have to have won prizes. They have to be, uh, have, have set the trail on fire at some point in their careers. A few of our cooks are virtuoso barbecue cooks. Some have had hot streaks that have cooled off. 
So, first of all, I'm really looking at skill level. Secondly, I have to cast this show like I would a television show in that I need to cover uh, different regions, different character types. I have to look at the whole piece of the puzzle and make sure everybody fits together and how they interact. That's extremely important. And then thirdly, that um, anybody on the show is extremely comfortable with cameras trailing them 24-7. Now, just because someone didn't get cast in the first round doesn't mean that we're not going to come back to them. I had only three days to put this show together, and I went to go to people who I'd had on shows before, who I was trying to get on shows in the past. That's how I cast the show. It was at breakneck speed that we cast this show. And uh, we were lucky to get it done in the pace that we did. And now that we're on, if we get another order, I'm going to revisit everybody. Talking with John Marcus. He is a Emmy Award winner. He's a Peabody Award winner. John, do you mind uh, sticking through a quick break and then we'll wrap it up here with one more segment? I'm with you. Okay, stick around. We'll be right back after a quick break. It's Rampy and you right here on the Barbecue Central Show. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy knockdown smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoke, cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the trunk of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at the BarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com or call 1-800-288-GURU. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at Fred's Music and Barbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, Big, 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 big name interviews. Big name interviews. Coverage of competition barbecue. Competition barbecue. And the only host willing to give his honest opinion on all topics in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Barbecue Central Show. All right, we are back. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Wrapping it up here with one more segment. Let's go ahead and get right back to the conversation. We're talking about Barbecue Pitmasters, which will be airing this coming Thursday on TLC and executive producer John Marcus is joining us. John, thanks for hanging with me through the break there. One more thing, too, before we jump back in. I wanted to tell anybody out there who wanted to be on the show and isn't now and is pissed at me, here's what you can do. Help us keep the show on so that we can do more of these. And once we're doing more, we're going to be coming to everybody who's a good candidate for the show. If you're mad at me now, let's keep it on and we'll get you on the show eventually. What about somebody that doesn't have an aspiration of being on the show itself as a cook, but perhaps a guy with golden tones who could do some quality voiceover work? Um, I'll tell you something. I think I may know one of those guys. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Listen, the more the merrier. I'd love to have everybody who's in barbecue somehow to appear on this show eventually. And I think if we get to do enough of them, we, everyone will be on it. It'll be like we'll all have our 15 seconds eventually. No doubt. This is uh, John Marcus. He's the executive producer of Barbecue Pitmasters, which will be on this coming Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Check your local listings. Now, we've been seeing a lot of these promos uh, that are kind of sprung up here on the Internet. And you see them on TV. TLC as well. 
were these kind of gimmicked up? I've been receiving a lot of emails from people going, oh, is Myron Mixon really like that? Or is Johnny Trigg seems like kind of a mean guy? And let me step back for one second and say, I believe Myron Mixon in his promo without a doubt. But the other two or three guys, were they kind of staged little WWE promo over the top or were they really kind of feeling it at that point? Here's the thing about television. I've, I've worked in TV for 25 years now. The camera never lies. So you can't get somebody to become something that they do not possess at all in their personality. So what you have is you have to find what they have in them and then tease out that part of their personality. And I'm telling you something that gentlemen and lady on the show did not have to be coaxed too hard to display what you see on those promos there. I think people are very protective of barbecue, and they're very protective that what appears in it is authentic, and they don't want anything that is gimmicky, like the word that you used. And that's why I'm there. I try to make sure that nobody's doing what they're uncomfortable doing. And so far, I really do believe that we have basically kept the show authentic. What's your favorite part of the show? My favorite part of the show is I really love when it's nighttime and it's quiet and people start chatting, and problems start happening, and adversarial elements of the show kick in because people have time to think and to strategize. I, I really love that time of the show. Um, I also like, of course, the one minute leading up to presenting your box for turn-in. That's when you really feel the pressure, and that's when tempers flare. We have five camera crews at every contest. As anybody who is involved in competition barbecue knows, Things happen. Things go wrong. Boxes get messed up. Things are forgotten. Tires go flat. Fires go out. It's not like you've got to create stories in barbecue, and we did not. Everything that happened on the show, like the hailstorm in Mesquite, Nevada, these are all real events. Assuming the show does well, which we all would anticipate, at least in the barbecue community, it's going to show very well. Is there a time frame on when TLC will order another season from you and when you'll be starting to get that underway? TLC will watch the numbers that come in with every show's rating, and they'll make a decision, I'm guessing, early on. This is their card game, and they have to make decisions that are right for the network. Uh, they've been unbelievably supportive of the show so far, but I think there'll be a trend after the first two or three shows that will indicate whether we can carry the audience from American Chopper and grow a further audience, which is what we'd like to do for the network. I'm always gratified to see that this show evokes responses in people who barbecue because it's a really challenging culinary art and a lot of people out there in the world don't understand what we go through when we cook at these contests. So I, I encourage all whatever responses people have in their minds because I read those. I think what's important to point out here about competition barbecue is – at least in my estimation, we seem to be, uh, we as in competition barbecue, seem to be on a cusp where it's either not going to really grow any bigger than it is right now. We, we may have kind of hit the apex or we're really on the precipice of jumping off to either latching on with some other bigger sport. For instance, NASCAR, which uh, KCBS has done throughout the year this year, where you might see a car race during the course of a three or four hour block on, uh, on television. But then in between, you're going to see a barbecue competition take place within the race, kind of building it uh, further and further into popularity. And you don't have to be, <clears throat> as you can see by some of these guys, an elite, highly conditioned, world-class athlete to do this. You just need the time uh, and the patience. And, but it's something that everybody can do. It is, and that's one of the things we showcase on Barbecue Pitmasters. Harry Sue and Slap Your Daddy, they cook on two Weber Smoky Mountains. They have a stoker as well, but their investment is kept at a minimum, and that's an advertisement to people saying, you know, you can jump into this for a matter of a hundred, hundreds of dollars, and that's it. And, and wouldn't it be great that one day we find that the main event that people go to is the barbecue competition, and then the side event... Uh, during the breaks in the barbecue competition is cars going around the track. This is John Marcus. He's the executive producer of Barbecue Pitmasters, which will be airing TLC this Thursday, so be sure to tune in. John, appreciate you coming on the show and talking about how the genesis and the background of the show, your background as well. Uh, we will do everything that we can to watch and get the ratings for you so we can have another season of Barbecue Pitmasters. So, as you said, everybody can get their 15 seconds of fame. Appreciate you doing it, John. My pleasure. He's John Marcus, executive producer of 
the Barbecue Pitmasters show, which will be airing on TLC this coming Thursday. Thanks again to him for making time out. Very busy man, very important man, dare I say. Emmy Award winning writer and Peabody Award winner. Just like to give those credentials out. Love to have the famous people here on the Barbecue Central show. John is undoubtedly a new convert, a centralite. So uh, thanks again to him for making time for the show. Here's the website for uh, TLC. I hope you have uh, a pen and 18 pieces of paper to write this website down. So let me preface this by saying you could just go to Google and type in BBQ Pitmasters TLC. And that'll be the first thing that shows up. But if you need to have the website link, here it is. It is uh, tlc.discovery.com slash TV slash BBQ hyphen pitmasters slash BBQ hyphen pitmasters dot HTML. Not even say that again, so don't even think about it. Or again, you can Google BBQ pitmasters TLC, and that will be the first thing that shows up in your return of search. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks to my guests, Darren Worth and Steve Farron, Iowa Smoky D's, and I Smell Smoke, respectively, as they head down to hook up with Rod Gray one last time in Tempe, Arizona, to decide who will be Team of the Year for 2009. This Saturday, only on pay-per-view. Okay, well, not on pay-per-view. Also, thanks to my last guest, John Marcus, executive producer of BBQ Pitmasters, which will air... The premiere episode this Thursday, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Check your local listings. And again, you can check out the website for more information. Great show lined up for you next week. And until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is your program host, Greg Rempe, and proud U.S. American. Good night now.